What is up gym rats? How's it going? It is finally a leg day and I'm going to try a new exercise today. So I've seen uh, Jeff Nippard do like lengthened partials on the hack squat. I mean my gym doesn't have a hack squat but I'm going to see what I can do, see if I can figure out an alternative maybe with the barbell or um, the weighted bag, something like that. We'll see but regardless let's go hit the gym. So I'm gonna do some like reintroduction of um, physio for my ankle, but it's not gonna be like ankle specific. It's just gonna be separate movements that will allow me to build up the strength and stability in my ankle again, because a lot of the stability in my ankle is lost because of the strength that I've lost in it. So a lot of the things I'm gonna do are like things like pistol squats and stuff like that. So. The first one I'm gonna do is just stepping up to a, I don't know what you call this, a block, I suppose, a foam block, and literally just doing one leg presses, I suppose. And it's gonna help me with my balance, all of my coordination, and obviously it's gonna help me warm up my legs as well. So that's always a bonus. So let's just do, I'll do a couple sets of these, and then we will move on to the next one. I'm only gonna do two, but I'll only show you one set and then I'll do another exercise and I'll only show you one set of that and then we'll move on to the actual leg workout. So let's crack on with the first one. Alright, so I changed my form sort of halfway through that set because I realised that I needed to be putting the weight through my foot and as I got halfway down the rep, I was taking all of the weight off my foot and just landing on my back foot. So the next set I'm going to do the same thing except each rep I'm going to be falling forward into my foot and then allowing my back foot to step off um, instead of going up and just straight down like that because when I'm coming down there's no control at all um, but if I'm pushing it through my front foot I can feel it work my leg and my ankle so that's ideal so uh, I'll do one more set of this uh, but you'll skip straight to the next exercise right so this exercise is literally just a barbell squat no weight on it um, but I'm going to be working on arse to grass so allowing my butt to basically hit my heels um, that's going to really help me work on my ankle mobility. Different to normal, I am starting with posterior chain, so uh, hamstrings, glutes, calves, um, not by actually directly train glutes um, and rarely calves, but regardless, you know what I mean. So someone stuck a resistance band on here, love to know why. So I'm going to do a warm up set at 27 and then um, We'll move on to the working weight. I think it was like 54, 59 last, last time. So um, we'll give that a try. Also, if you want to actually get the most gains out of a leg curl, you want the biggest stretch at the top. So that. You don't want the pad down here or, hang on, all the way down here. All right, look at the range of motion on this absolutely nothing um put the pad all the way up there and all the way up there obviously if your legs can't physically take that then fair enough but um most people can 
shouldn't actually really need the belt today. Um, if you are new here, then the belt is to stop my hips coming off the uh, pad. So I keep the stretch on the hamstrings because that is ideal. Well, that's too far away actually. My short ass legs. There you go, that's more like it. I wonder why this felt weird. The bloody pad isn't down. That's more like it. Nice, lovely set. We'll uh, up it to 54 and um, then see how it moves at that weight. Should move relatively comfortably, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm sure I did 59 before, fuck it, let's try 59. Um, wait, hang on, I can't read. It's so hard to read it from up here. So, yeah, that's 59. Um, so yeah. Don't need a rest, so let's uh, let's crack on with the first set. Also, this uh, pad is so important because it's another thing that's stopping your hips or at least your femur from coming off of the pad. Which, like I said, will take a lot of the stretch out of the movement, which is not what you want. So, put that pad, put that pad as tight to your uh, your quads as you can, and it should be on your quads. It shouldn't be below your knee, um, and it shouldn't be like at your belly button. Um, if it is, then you're too far up or too far back on the pad. See, mine is literally about two or three inches above my knee. Um, and for an even better stretch, lean over. I find it more comfortable to do this, like hug the bars instead of hold them. Um, but whatever suits, lean over. You can feel it stretch even more here and then uh, start the reps. Too heavy but 54 is too light. So let's put it on 54. And luckily on this machine, there's like incremental weights. So you've got like 2.5 pounds, five pounds and 7.5 pounds. If I just do 2.5 pounds, which is literally like just over a kilo. That should be a good, a good weight to do. So uh, let's have a little rest first and then uh, we'll do the next set. Add a good rest. Ugh. Let's uh, try this weight. So like I said, it's 54. Um, with a 2.5 pound incremental weight. So 1.1 kilo incremental weight, which means it's 51.1 kilos, which might be, uh, which might be perfect. I hope it's perfect. There's always such a struggle finding the right weight on things at the minute. Ugh. Way too tight. Had the buckle on my balls. Are you ready? I'm sure you are. All well, these shorts are riding up my ass. Okay. Holy shit. Okay, I think I've just toasted my hamstrings to be honest. Um, so I've got six. Not ideal, but anyway, let's, uh, let's go on to the next hamstring exercise. I think when I'm training my hamstrings, I always aim to do one exercise that trains it in the contracted position, so the shortened position. 
and one exercise that targets it in the lengthened position uh, because your hamstring crosses over your knee joint and, well, at least behind your knee joint and your hip. So you have to work knee flexion and hip extension. Um, that is how you cover both, if you didn't know. So we'll uh, go to do the hip extension now. If you have seen my leg days before, you'll know I do the like Nordic type curls um, on the bench. The, I had a PT come up to me the other day, or when I was last doing them, and he said, do it on here. So we're gonna do it on here. I tried it on that session and it was so much harder. So I'm gonna have to use the pole to um, give myself a little bit of uh, help on the upwards phase. Um, but also the lowering phase is super, super important. So I'm going to go as far down as I can whilst controlling it. Um, and then once I can't get any further, I'm gonna use the pole to kind of help myself come up. And as soon as I can come up without using the pole, I'll do that. I'll still be holding it, but I won't be pushing any, you know, I won't be pushing for it is what I'm trying to say. So let's give it a try. Oh my God, it's so much harder. And if you're wondering how I'm gauging when to stop, because obviously it's not a weighted exercise and it's an exercise that is like, um, how do you explain it? Like it's a lot harder to tell when your rep is finished because there's so much range of motion you can get. But I think if I'm getting to the point where I'm, you know, almost vertical and I still need help coming up, then I know it's time to stop. Um, but that was love. That felt so good. I mean, hard, but it felt good. So at least you know this is a better contraption to use now. Uh, and let's have a little rest and then uh, do the next set. Whoa, right, let's do this next set. I'm giving you a better angle as well this time. It does take some getting used to, like trusting the pad that you're not going to fling over. But you know, you get used to it.
Jesus Christ, okay. Oh my God, that's that exercise done. If you try this exercise, a very key point that I've just been doing in that set is trying to like force your feet into the back pad. That really, um, really put a lot of tension on it when I was, uh, sorry, when my hamstrings were stretched. So that was nuts. Let's, uh, let's crack on with some quads. Right, well, it looks like either the staff have put more plates up here or more people are using it. So it's always a good sign. People are catching on. So I'm going to do 20 kilos each side. I'm sure I did 25 each side last session. Um, oh yeah, it was 25. So I'm literally just going to do one set warming up on 25s and then I'll do a set Sorry, no, one set warming up on 20s, and then I'll do my set of 25s, maybe even more if that's, uh, if that's what I feel like I can do. Chuck another five on. If they're up here, yeah, they are. Also, if you're wondering what these extra poles are for, so I've got the plate bits at the bottom and you've got some at the top as well. If you put them at the top, it makes it not as hard, basically. So because you're loading the weight further away from the axis, but closer to the effort, which is like basic biomechanics, um, makes it harder. So if you want to make it a bit easier, move the plates closer to the axis and uh, further away from the effort. Effort being us holding it and lunging or squatting, whatever. So if you want to like super incrementally up the weight, um, putting, you know, a 2.5 on here might be better for you than putting a 2.5 down there. Whatever you think works. Um, but I'm confident in my ability that I can do a significant amount of reps still by putting the weight on the normal, the one that's the one that's further away, basically. Whew, let's go. Well, that's hard. Open for 12 again. If I get it, I will be sure to add another five on next week. Ugh. Way too easy, mate. <sighs> 
as I got through that set, I realised my reps were absolutely awful. I was like minimally bending at my knee, which is not ideal. But uh, anyway, that's the exercise done because it's killed me off. Let's move on to the next quad exercise. Right, a bit of a questionable exercise this one, but I've seen lots of people have started doing it, so I'm gonna give it a try. So you can see I've got the bar set up here and I've got the safeties set up here. And this height of the safeties is actually where I bottom out in my squat. So I'm basically just gonna be doing length and partials on the barbell squat. I'm gonna do two sets of this. Um, I don't know what weight to do, but I'm gonna chuck on a 20 and a 10. Um, and just see how that feels. So please bear in mind, I do not squat. The last time I squatted with a barbell was about a year ago. So we're gonna see how it feels, um, or at least squatted properly. Like I've squatted weight, like body weight and a barbell without any weight before, but I've not squatted with weight in about a year. So we'll see how it feels. Worst case, it really fucks me and I uh, can't do it. But let's, uh, Let's give it a go. Hopefully it feels good. Okay, that was eight. I didn't realize how much that was gonna kill me. Um, but I just don't think it gives the same effect as a Smith machine. I think the whole point that Smith machine works so well with these length and partials, particularly on our squat, is because all you've got to think about is moving up and down. But with a free weight barbell, it makes life a lot harder. So I'm gonna to have to give this one a miss. Um, just not, doesn't feel stable to me at all. Um, if you want to know why I don't squat, it's because I've got Osgood Schlatters in both my knees. Hence the reason I also wear knee sleeves on every knee extension exercise, regardless of what weight I'm doing. Because um, if you saw me doing the barbell squats at the start, and if you listen carefully, I'll try and play it. Uh, you can hear my clicks in my knee. Every time I squat, so... Uh, this is not for me, but we'll, um, we'll wrap up with some adductors and then finish it there. Whew. Right, this will be the last exercise of the leg session. Gonna do two sets. Funny story, uh, well, it's not, not actually a funny story, it's just a story. Um, I never used to do this exercise. I always used to uh, just, well, not bother with it. I don't think there's any benefit and then, uh, you start to look at all the bodybuilders, like the pro bodybuilders, and you realize that so many of them have super wide legs. And it's not just because of your quads and your hamstrings, it's because of your adductors. So definitely work them in and they'll definitely help you um, fill out your shorts if that's what you want to do. Anyway, let's go up to 72. Too easy to begin with, but... It's actually not far off. We wait, I'll do, I'll do 77. The feeling of a leg day, it's always so much different to the feeling of like an upper body day. I just don't like it. I wish it had the same, you know, great feeling, but on a leg day, I just feel sweaty and sticky and tired and all of that stuff. So, I don't know, tell me what you think. Do you lot prefer leg days to upper body days or do you prefer upper body days? I feel like most people prefer upper body days, but I definitely do.
bloody. That is that session done. Let's have a look at the leg pump. It's not bad, you know. I'm definitely slowly putting size on them. Don't get me wrong. They're miles off where I want them to be. But like, considering I went through a really long phase of just not training them. And also I hold, I hold a lot of my mass up here in my legs, so it's hard to see. But I'm trying. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Well, that is the end of the session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new, hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications because these videos are gaining so much traction right now. Um, so just be really good if a lot of you could just keep engaged with me so I know what to do and what not to do. Like what sort of videos you like, what exercises you enjoy watching, what you like me to talk about during my sessions, um, all of that good stuff. So it really does help me out. But once again, that's all from me. And I'll catch you in the next session. Peace.